Hey guys, what's up? Welcome into the video. So in this video, I'm going to be going over three stocks that I'm watching and looking to trade this upcoming week, going over the thesis on each trade, the target levels, stop loss levels, and more. And a quick reminder, of course, these are the moves that I'm making in the market. It doesn't mean you should. Always have your own plan before getting to any trade. I'm, of course, not a financial advisor. All right, so before we get into it, let's take a look at last week's stock picks, how those performed, and then we'll get into this week's picks. Let's get into it. So first up, last week we talked about Facebook stock, ticker symbol FB. This is one that I just personally thought was one of the easiest trades to make in the market. Facebook is a stock that always bounces back after these major dips. It had gaps to fill above. So this past week we saw it fill one of those gaps. It closed up over 5% for the week and also broke out of that falling wedge setup. So very nice move this past week. More upside to come in my personal opinion towards the next gap fill at around 361. Next up, we talked about Pinterest, ticker symbol P-I-N-S. So this is a heavily beatdown stock, one that I'm personally very bullish on for this stock to reverse. And this one, once again, bounced off that key level support. They beat earnings this past week, closing up about 4% on the week. And this one looks great for more upside from here, in my personal opinion. The first levels that I'm targeting personally is the 49 to 50 range, and we'll see where it goes from there. And then finally, we talked about Merimed, ticker symbol M-R-M-D, as a longer term value value play. This one actually had a great move this past week, closing up about 15%. And we finally saw the sector start to take off late on Friday when there was news about a Republican proposed MJ bill. And like I've been saying with this sector, the sector is literally a coiled spring ready to pop. And on the right news, if safe banking was to pass, the sector and these stocks are due for much, much larger moves. We're just seeing the start of it. If any of these bills do pass, we shall see. Okay, so getting into this week's picks, the first stock that I'm watching is Blink Charging, ticker symbol BLNK. So this is an EV charging stock. And late on Friday, we got news that the infrastructure bill finally passed the US House and this is gonna provide billions to the EV sector. So the bill includes major support for electric vehicles and clean energy. Specifically, there is $7.5 billion set aside to create a nationwide network of EV charging stations. And out of all the EV charging stocks, in my personal opinion, Blink Charging has the strongest breakout setup, which we'll take a look at in just a second. It does have a pretty small market cap at 1.3 billion, so this stock can obviously move pretty quickly if it gets going. And it also does have a 35% short float, so we could see money flooding into this stock as it gets hyped up as a potential short squeeze play. So taking a look at the technical setup on this one, it has bounced multiple times off that $26 level of support. It recently broke out of this downtrending descending triangle and is now consolidated and pulled back a bit after that move. But after this infrastructure bill news is out, I think that's gonna be the catalyst needed for this stock to see a larger breakout move. And also zooming into the chart a bit, we can see that it is forming an inverse head and shoulders pattern as well. Right now it's starting to form the right shoulder of that pattern and a break above the 34.5 to 35 range of resistance. This stock is due for a massive move if it can break above that range of resistance. Now one thing to be aware of with this stock is they do have earnings this coming week on Thursday, November 11th. Personally, I'm never a fan of holding short-term trades through earnings just because it's always a gamble. So maybe if you're a risk adverse trader, think about getting out before earnings and potentially re-entering after earnings depending on how those results go. If you do want to avoid that volatility or if you just want to gamble and hold through, go for it. But that's definitely a day to be aware of for anybody looking to trade this stock. So getting into the next one, the next stock that I'm liking a lot right now is Lightspeed Commerce, ticker symbol LSPD. So this stock is a hyper growth software as a service company and took a huge drop this past week after they reported earnings, something that in my opinion is a major overreaction and bringing up a great buying opportunity. So taking a look at the numbers from their earnings, they beat on EPS losing 8 cents instead of the 10 cents projected. They beat on revenue as well with 133 million in revenue compared to the expectation of 124 million. So this company double beat on revenue and EPS. So the reason this stock dropped 30% on earnings must be because of guidance, right? Well, taking a look at guidance here, for the full 2022 fiscal year, Lightspeed says that it now expects revenue between 520 million and 535 million compared to the previous expectation between 510 million and 530 million in revenue. So they actually raised revenue guidance and they updated their adjusted EBITDA guidance and now it's expected between a loss of about 40 million to 45 million compared to the previous expectation of 35 million. So they did miss on profitability projections, not by a huge margin, just a miss between five to 10 million on EBITDA projections. But for a hyper growth company, the most important thing as they keep on that revenue growth at a high rate and worry about profitability later. So in my opinion, there's just nothing in this report to worry about. It just comes out to be a big overreaction to these numbers. 
And while this company does have a pretty expensive valuation, valued with a market cap a little bit above $13 billion, any company that's growing 200% plus year over year is obviously gonna have a high valuation. It has a much cheaper valuation than some other software as a service place, such as Snowflake, for example. But in my opinion, they had a very solid earnings report. And if the stock dropped 5, 10% after this, it'd be one thing, but the stock ended up dropping 30% after these earnings, and the technical setup is looking great for a reversal play. So taking a look at the chart, we can see the stock dropped from the high 90s all the way hitting a low of $67 per share after these earnings and found support at that $67 level. It ended up getting a slight bounce and bottoming off that 67 level as well the next day. So this is a double bottom setup looking great and primed for a reversal. The next key level to get above is 74 before it sees more upside and one that could be setting up very nicely for that future gap fill up to 96.5 for a potential full upside move reversal. And for this trade, I'd have a stop loss below that recent support at $67 per share. And for target levels, the first target I'd be looking for is that next psychological level at $80 per share. And after $80, the next higher target is that gap fill move up to around 96.5. So we'll see how this stock pans out. In my opinion, the setup is just great risk reward after this double bottom move. And just a pretty obvious overreaction to those earnings results in my personal opinion. So Lightspeed dropped over 30% at earnings, and that was a big overreaction in my opinion. The next stock we're gonna be talking about is a stock that dropped over 30% after earnings as well. And in my opinion, it's a pretty fair reaction, but it's going to bring up some great trading opportunities. And that is of course Peloton stock, ticker symbol PTON. So there's no sugarcoating it, Peloton's earnings were pretty much as bad as it gets. Their loss per share was $1.25, versus $1.07 expected. Their revenue was just 805 million compared to 810 million expected. So not huge misses there. But the thing is for this past quarter, Peloton spent absolutely huge on ads and they still could not hit their revenue numbers, which is definitely concerning. They also cut their guidance forecast, which is absolutely going to kill any growth stock. So the company is now projecting between 3.35 million to 3.54 million subscribers in 2022 down from a prior outlook of 3.63 million, and now it sees revenue ranging between 4.4 and 4.8 billion, down from the expectation before this call of 5.4 billion. So some personal thoughts that I have is the thesis that Peloton is a COVID stock has proved right after this earnings call, but is Peloton a dead company? In my opinion, it is far from that. I was personally very bullish on Peloton in 2020. I was a heavy buyer around $30 per share last year. I traded in and out of it multiple times. Right now I do have a small position that did end up getting screwed at earnings. Am I selling that? No. Am I adding more to that long position? No. But like I was saying, there's gonna be some great trading opportunities for this stock. It's likely going to be volatile. It's heavily oversold here. So we could see some very nice moves to the upside into the downside within this range. So taking a look at the technical setup here, we can see that it had that absolutely massive drop down from around $90 per share and ended up closing the day at $55 per share after that earnings report. So the biggest level that I'm personally watching and would likely be the bottom if it gets there in my opinion would be that $50 level of support. It acted as that previous large breakout level back in 2020. If it was to retest that level, it likely acts as major support and we likely see a big bounce off that level. And we'll look more at that support level in just a second. But after this drop, as we can see, the RSI is sitting at 8.4. For reference, an oversold stock has an RSI below 30. You almost never see a four hour charts RSI below 10 unless it's a biotech stock that missed FDA approval or something like that. So it's very rare to see anything this oversold. So in my opinion, this stock is gonna see a nice balance sometime between Monday and Tuesday. And I personally think the stock balances from around the 54 to 55 level, sees the balance to around 58 to 62 from there, and then would likely see lower after that. And that is where that key level of support at $50 per share could take hand. I do think that shorts are gonna take control of the stock once again, after this stock does have that relief bounce that is needed because it's just so oversold here. Now, one other thing to note, the previous bottom that was found on Peloton, after the freak out of the Peloton tread not being safe, back in May, the stock bottomed around $80 per share. And as we can see, the volume profile of that dip, it had huge volume, 80 million in volume on that dip and on the day that it hit that bottom at $80 per share. Now the stock also saw 80 million in volume on Friday after that earnings call. So that could potentially be an indicator that this may be the bottom if this pattern repeats. 
Of course, that's not a guarantee. Like I said, I think the stock has a big relief balance before shorts take control once again and drive this price down a little bit further. So I'll personally be looking to play that relief balance either Monday or Tuesday, targeting a move between 58 to 62. And I'll look to take quick profits on that balance before waiting for a re-entry around that $50 level of key support. So $50 would personally be the zone I look to load up for a 10% plus bounce off that spot if it gets there. And as we can see on the Fibonacci retracements as well, right at $50.53, that is the 78.6% retracement from highs to lows. Just another indicator that would give me full confidence entering heavy at $50 for that bounce. So of course, falling knives and oversold plays are not for everybody. So obviously don't enter the trade if you don't have full confidence or your own plan before going in. But that's my personal trading plan for Peloton this coming week. Looking for an initial balance sometime between Monday and Tuesday for a move back up to the 58 to 62 range. We'll look to take profits there before getting out, waiting for shorts to drive it down further, which would be the likely scenario in my opinion. And I would personally be adding heavy if it was to get to that $50 level of key support for another bounce back to the upside. Of course, if you like to short, you could wait for that initial relief balance, relief rally, short that thing down from around $60 for a target of around $50, cover your short there. So there's definitely both ways to play this, bullish or bearish. In my opinion, there'll be some great trading opportunities for Peloton both ways this coming week. And of course, I could be wrong on guessing the price move of this stock. Maybe the stock doesn't even balance Monday or Tuesday. Maybe this thing just falls straight down to $50 before bouncing, which is the spot I would look to be adding heavy and looking to add calls as well. And maybe this stock bounces on Monday and doesn't look back. Maybe it bounces all the way back to 65 to 70. Who knows what's gonna happen, but that's what I personally think is gonna happen. I think it's gonna stay volatile in this range and bring us some great opportunities for bulls and bears, like I was saying. All right, so that's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if it did provide some value to you and i would greatly appreciate that if you are interested in joining the private discord chat that's the first link down in the description you get trading buy and sell alerts anytime i make a move in the market nightly watch lists every single night for trading opportunities for the next day you have full access to my portfolio and i answer any questions you have so that's the first link down in the description if you are interested thanks so much for watching guys i'll catch you next time make sure to trade smart this upcoming week and let's get rich